Should we start? So, so good afternoon, everybody. Thank you for coming to this session to learn the new things in Drupal A via debugging. So let's talk about a little about us. So Jesus this is my business partner in a new company we recently started in USA, named Make We Know. Because you know, you know, we know. <laughs> And so he is, every, uh, he is like a 50% of the company and, uh, and the other 50% and he is in charge of everything. And the else is Do the world, you travel. <laughs> yeah. So. Okay, okay well, uh, Eduardo here. Again, is the partner in the adventure and yeah, what? Okay. Mm -hmm. And you don't want to miss Eduardo tomorrow. It's keynote, community keynote as well. Just yeah. to remember. Tomorrow. So let's start okay. talking about this. Mm -hmm. So during the session, we were talking about how to debug Drupal. And I mean, it's, this is not about X debug. Sorry if you're coming, trying to see this. It's more like debugging the different subsystems of Drupal, like debugging not only code, no, 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 not code, you know. debugging, you know, we all know Drupal 8 has a new set of subsystems, like the storage system, which is we have configuration and, st and state the new plugin system. I mean, how are you aware how many plugins are in the system? Can How can you find out all those plugins? Same thing for all the services. Drupal provides with a lot of services. When I'm talking about services, I am not talking about web services. I'm services. Classes is registering a service containers. There's a lot of that data as well. We have the new you know, event listeners. Have the events that happens at a certain point when something happens. So there is this, during the session, we'll talk to you and show you how to do that, how to know which pieces of, the, which, um, um, pieces of those new subsystems are in the system and how to find them. So we're talking about how to debug also dependencies because now Drupal has, man, is using Composer. Well, not like default, but you can use, you can take advantage of Composer to manage your dependencies. And we'll see how this works, and then we'll see how to debug the site as well, how many, how many nodes we have, and extra information about the site. And let's start with the dependencies. And we'll show you some tools during this session that you might be aware of, but I mean, it's, it's always good to know. So we're talking about Drupal console and a new Drupal CLI. I mean, you, have you hear about it? Use it? Yes? Great. And about Composer and just, just I mean, avoid this line. Composer is a package manager for, for PHP. And let's start first how to debug the system. So maybe you inherit the website or you're starting and you say, I'm someone is else working in, you know, in your website or someone in your team add a new dependency or update your composer file. So, but first, before trying starting to work, if you have the Drupal console in your system, you will be able to run the check command. This will give you an overview of your system if your system is ready to work with D8 because we all know D8 has some different requirements than, than D7, previous version. So we have, it's this command, just check for all of the uh, required dependencies of PHP are installed in your system. It also check for some recommendations in the, in the system. So if you run this command, you will see something like this. And this data is, is from the Drupal.org requirements. Let me show you. This file reads, or this command reads a file in your system. Okay, once you get Drupal console, you run the init command and this file get copied in your system so you can play around. And this, again, this is based on the DO uh, requirements. So it, it also, it's requiring you the minimum 5.9 version of PHP, even when it's already, I mean, obsolete. But that's how it's in, in the requirement definition. Then you have some configuration. So we are forcing here, in, I mean, overriding some values. So time sum is required. The Drupal console uses Symfony console component and this. And this configuration is required to daytime. So we are, for, I mean, setting daytime zone and then some memory limit. You can feel free to play around with this file. It also has some, you can also have some recommended configurations. I mean, for your specific projects, you can add it here. And then finally, the required extension. So again, this art took from, from the O. So you, again, you can just play around here, add more, or you can also add some recommendations. If you add recommendations, you will see like messages like, you know, Yellow messages, if you are something required that is missing, you will see the red ones. And about dependencies, again, we are using Composer. And the first thing you need to do when you inherit the project is just run this Composer validate command, and this is what you should see. 
you know, the, your composer is valid, right? If you see something else in it, and something is missing, you know, also, and you have an extra comma, you always see it here. If you're, this is commanded like really, really great when you're starting to work in a project. We have different commands. Again, Drupal 8, it takes advantage of third party libraries and Symfony components. So you might be, can probably say, you know, I, I know a, a command or something to know which modules are installed. I, I can have a list of my modules, but Drupal core depends on other packages and you know, maybe the modules you load in your system depends on other packages that, that are not Drupal modules. So if you want to know which packages are, is your site requiring, you can just run composer show. This will lead you a list, a list of all of the packages, the version currently, the current installed version, and the description of this package. Again, we are using composer. We start not even talking about Drupal because you know Drupal is taking advantage of composer. If you want to see a specific definition of a package, what you can do is composer show and pass as an argument the package you want to see. And if you pass dash dash latest, you will see how this red, this little message will see. You will see the current version and it will tell you what's the latest, latest version of that package available so you can download. So you can run you know, composer update for, for that package. And if you want to know if any of your packages is, is outdated or if there's new version for a package, you can just run composer update outdated here. You will see, again, the package, then the current version, and if there's something new. If you want to know, I mean, who is requesting a package? Maybe you have, you know, we are talking about composer. Maybe my site is telling me that I am requiring Gossel. But if I take a look at my JSON, for composer JSON file, I might be do not find Gossel definition there. So who, I mean, why is Composer, or why is any specific package on my site? You can run Composer Y and pass the package name. This will tell you which packages in your current site are requiring this, are requiring the dependency. And well, finally, remember the Gossel issue, the security issue a few months ago? Well, there was an issue with, 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 with Gossel. And if you want to make sure your site is not having any like, like security issues, there is a project called Security Checker maintained by Sensio people. And you, you just need to run, the, it's, a new, it's, a, it's a command line, and it's based on the Symfony component as well. You just run the security checker, and then the command is called security column check. And this will read your composer log file. It will tell you if there is a critical, I mean, a known vulnerability of your, any, any of the packages you are using in your project, it will see something like that. And it will tell you, I mean, what, what is, what's, what's missing, what's the current version. Now let's talk about your site now. That was, again, Sony Composer thing. Now let's talk about Drupal. Mm -hmm. And we touched that before because even, you know, this is a Drupal thing. Drupal is using Composer. You are managing your dependencies through Composer. So let's talk about this. Mm -hmm. Okay, so the idea in the Drupal console maybe is well known among you about the, we have commands to generate code. But there is like a one tier of our commands. Um, I like to see the Drupal console like a, another story from the same situation. Like uh, the, the UI we, ha we have now in web only represent one part of the data we have, but that doesn't mean we don't, we don't have more data. So we build some commands to try to provide this information. So a basic command, obviously you have a Drupal site installed, it's site status, that will provide all the PHP specific version data, as you can see, some values you could get from the PHP file. Obviously, this is important. Here, the, what, database, what version of uh, Drupal are you using? Some indexing values. And also, of course, some uh, information about team, what is the directory, what is the database connection. So this is basically the status report you can get from the UI. Mm -hmm. get from the On the other hand, you could be more specific about what you want. So we have a section related with configuration in Drupal. In this case, is config setting the bug. With this information, it's like a, you could have some specific um, settings for uh, for each side in, in, in case you want to, to have some values in production different than in, in local. So maybe some system you use is not working, like a maybe some Twitter integration. So maybe you, you need to check it out quickly what is are those values and we will, in, uh, you could get inspection about this. So this is reading your settings files, it's just showing you the data that, I mean, you don't want to commit that, set, I mean, that 
API key, so you put in your things files, you know, remember the, oops. 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 Okay. Moreover, um, there are some times that we need to try to get some inspection in, the, in our website, it's especially for front-end people, when someone requests I need to do a theme. So it's really hard to try to predict how big is the, is the site, because obviously the theming is based in how many content types you have, how many themes, <coughs> many variables, views on everything. Uh, sometimes the client, they only provide the URL and then you say, just click and you will know how big is the site. But obviously this is not the perfect situation. Obviously this is not a perfect solution, but at least they will be give you some information about what is the structure of the, of the website in terms of the amount of node, content types, if they are using comments, obviously, if you see there is no comments, obviously maybe they are using something like discuss or something, but at least we'll gi give you a panorama. So like maybe if you are hired, if you are get hired for migrate some website, and then obviously the amount of no and notes that the users and comments will be important to define the effort you need to do. This is also really useful when you, again, you inherit a site from someone else, you just import the database and they give you a quick overview of what's on that data. Mm -hmm. you, I mean, how many like nodes, content types are here. I mean, give you a like fast overview so you can see, I mean, how this site was mm -hmm. built. And remember, all these commands are open source, are in the console, and everything is OOP. So in the future, maybe you want to extend this. You have the option to extend those commands to try to create your own functions. <laughs> Not only just copy paste, but you can copy paste and create your 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 own situation. But it's like a this is not the final solution. So we, the idea is in Drupal 8, we have this OOP situation. So we could take advantage of this in all the commands I, I am presenting right now. The other um, command maybe is not related by the booking, but it's, it's useful to, to debug your system, is to create content. So we have some commands like a create nodes. You could provide some information about the decoration title and, and everything. This is so similar to the devil, but it's so similar because now in, in the core in Drupal 8, the process that we have for devil generate everything is just UI because the core inside they have own functions to create dummy content. So what we do is just provide our UI in the CLI to call the core functions to do this. And the good thing is now you don't need to install anything in your website. So if you have the Drupal console, that's it. You have everything installed and then you can take advantage of this. <clears throat> yeah, obviously there are, oops. Oh, that's, that's, the, that's just like header. <laughs> okay. So we, we think about the development process, uh, as you know, now we are called full stack, right? That is like a, to be um, in football terms, we be a goalkeeper, <laughs> a middleman and go to, to a score, right? So you need to do everything. And now we try to create some commands to try to help us in our daily process. It's not only, it's not only by coding to generate code and not only to space the code. So we have a command in this case for try to facilitate the process to put into that mode or production mode. It's just to avoid maybe you forget to click something in the UI and then suddenly in production everything looks wrong and it's maybe because you you forget to disable whatever. So in this case, in the mode, obviously what we do is we enable, we disable the compress and caching and we enable the UI SQL and for views, statistics and everything. I show you, show you the query that you're running mm -hmm. and show you the time it's taken to run some. Do we increase your, your, your error level? Um, and this is what it happens, uh, so yeah, it's fine. It's one, it's two, mm. it's fine. So yeah, this is something you could do here. So what it happens when you run this command, you know, remember what it is, is basically you go here and check and uncheck this. So you but, get again. But amount of others clicks, so you Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so that means you need to do clicking by this in production and maybe you spend, maybe, I don't know, a minute or two yeah. minutes, but why do that if you could do in maybe two seconds? If you wanna, maybe you might, again, mm -hmm. you get in your site, you just clone your site, you put the database from the site in production. You want to turn all those caches off, so make sure it's working. What? Mm -hmm. It's working? In, yeah. Same with views. Settings, yeah, we can see here, clearly. <laughs> this is a problem with certain slides. The minute we do the, the, the one or two slides, it just wouldn't, 
Okay, ah, then. Okay. okay, then. Then we didn't see the view thing, but basically it was imagine what you saw is it's showing you the query and showing you the time is, that it's taken to to execute. Then another thing that it's turning on and off is the login error. So basically, just turn from none to all messages. So once you have your site in your local, you can see all of the messages. You know, the Drupal set message thing in your in your site. Then the final part of the command we have the site mode. Again, the first part was. Compressing, say yes, 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 turning on, off, views, thing. Mm -hmm. And the final part, it helps change in some settings in your, in your uh, services.yaml file, mm -hmm. which basically turn on and off the tweak debug, right? So if you're a front-end developer or you want to know which, you know, the team is loading, tweak, tweak block is, is being loaded, it's turn on this, the, you know, the template suggestion functionality. This, this is something you need to do manually because you don't have uh, an option to do this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. now you can, you can change the settings that local here. But if you do that, you always have it. So this, using this command, you have a chance to like turn it on and off. Mm -hmm. And this is what it happens. So if you run the command again, site mode dev, it will change the services YAML file. And you will be able to see the team suggestions in your source code. And, basically, and obviously, you don't want to have this in production, so you run side node prod to turn all the changes back to the original state. And then just, again, you can just make sure you don't, you don't exploit those configurations. So. Mm -hmm. so obviously, this is a, a simple command to try to check the log, but it's useful when maybe you did something really wrong. <laughs> And your site is not accessible. Never happens with Drupal, right? <laughs> so at least you could check the, the your log in the in database. Actually, we have uh, one command in process to include that is like a do a a, a pull, a like a log. constantly reviewing to do that, like a tail in a log. But for this, this is a contribution. I don't remember. Came from Europe, I guess. Yes, and yeah, if you. As you can guess, if you pass the ID of the log that you want to see, it shows you the detail of the log that is happening. And sometimes, again, when you are creating or enabling our modules, some modules create tables in your system, right? And you might be want to make sure that table was properly created and all those fields were properly created on that database. So the database table debug command, it will show you all of the tables on the system, right? You don't have to like know, you don't have to like log into like, you know, MySQL, CLI, typing user power because it's reading from the site configuration. And as you can guess, if you want to see information, detailed information of a table, you just pass the table name and you will see this. And this is, again, really useful when you enable a module that creates a new, has a new content type and end up, is, is end up creating new tables in the system. So obviously this is helpful for people who is not familiar with SQL commands. Thank you. And, but if you really want to jump into the MyS client, you can use database client. So this will pass all the credentials to your MySQL CLI and will jump you into that so you can start like playing around. And as you, what you can see here is the database connection information. This is because we have the learning option turn, turn it on in Drupal console. So this outputs more verbose data. So it's not only executing the command, it's also telling you what's, which command was executed. So it tells you right here what was executed. Mm -hmm. let, yeah, that's fine. Let's, let's talk, go here. Let's talk about the different subsystems of Drupal, right? Remember what we'll tell you? There is storage, there is events, there is plugins, and there are services. So let's start with the storage one. Me? Yeah. <laughs> so the idea is like a, in, in Drupal now we have an storage for almost any different plugin. And the first thing you need to know is um, no information about this. In this case, with configuration management, we could have this configuration listed. Right now, in a new website, we have about well, Configure, uh, I don't know. No, configuration objects. Yeah, would be more, but it's more than 300. So the idea is when you configure the site, the email, the title, contact, and everything, everything is stored in in in, the, in those files. Or every, any of them represent a YAML file, and this is what you export and import with, for everything which is not um, 
data, right? Like a node itself. So when we when you get those files, you want to get more specific. The solution you need to do is is you take the key, and with that key you will get the information about your site. In this case, we are seeing like at the basic site information, and we represent those pages. Again, this is a, a, a to analyze faster uh, what is in your website. Yeah, this is like going to inner login, going to config, then configuration something, mm -hmm. and then going to like single export thing, so you can see this. Yeah. Is running this. So, but outside configuration, like the idea is configuration is something you modify in your developed environment. You choose the specific file you want to put in production, and then you see the changes in production. But there, there are some a new concept in Drupal 8, which is states, and this is information only relevant for your own environment. Like uh, the last time when the Chrome was executed, or if the CSS cache in, enabled or not. Or, or different other values that maybe they are only valuable for us, but obviously help us to try to debug uh, with some any strange issue we have. And the first thing maybe we need to do make it as is normal. Maybe not never happen uh, for you. It's like a, maybe everything works perfectly in your system, but in production no. So it's the first thing you need to do is is to review what states are affecting the process in the production because maybe it's not a code problem, it's just a state value that doesn't fit with the logic inside your code. And obviously, if that is the problem, uh, here, here you could say what is the value for the state debug, and it's the, in this case, system team files, oh, but it's not here. But we provide some com uh, a command to change the state. Yeah, right? the thing for configuration, you can mm -hmm. go something like, instead of debug, state debug, state, state edit or override. You say override, you can pass the key, you know, the, the object and then the key and value, so override it from CLI, or you can either just go like edit and just mm -hmm. edit in your so like. In, in this case in production, you go to the command to modify the state and then change the proper value, and now your code works properly. Um, but it's, it's, it's a way to try to fix the problem. Another new things, or your subsystem, they will see us. There's there are services. There is something called the service container. Simple thing: services, a useful object, and you just put it in something called the service container in order to share across your whole application. In this case, your application is your website, right? Mm -hmm. And again, same as configuration. So Drupal has a lot of plenty of those. So Container debug will list all of the services registered in the container. So there is like a mongoose list. So it's like, mm -hmm. and then this will tell you what the service ID or say your service name is in which class is registered as a service. Yeah, so don't worry, don't complain. It's just like all this is happening here. If you want to know more information about a specific service, you can again container debug. Mm -hmm. Go back to explain something. Um, so in Drupal 8, there are right, more than 500 services available to be used. But as a developer, well, there is in the UI, in the documentation maybe, but it's, it's, it's really difficult to try to know which services we have available, right? Yeah, uh, actually, there's, yeah, there's no way other than opening the core <laughs> services YAML file and see which the files are, what the service name. So the idea is you can use to try to identify what services you want, for instance, in Drupal 7, we use the global user. Guess what? That, that is not available anymore. So the way to identify which user is connected is using a service named current user. So obviously, you are a new developer. So someone say everything is services. What you can do is execute container, filter, put user, and then try to inspect a little bit about which uh, services are related with users. And in, as in the say in this in the next slide, when you get one service, you could now identify what is the class used to attend that service, and then you could spend the, the inspect the methods to try to see if this is the method. Obviously, you could see a key here the method, but if you want to really really see the code. Obviously, you just need to go to the class uh, to identify. So it's, it's it's a way to try to learn from the debugging to try to. I identify quickly the information you need because the otherwise you need to do reverse engineering. It's like uh, checking the code, clicking, 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 and inspect. So you could spend easily hours on that. 
right? And obviously your project manager will not be happy if you just spend four hours trying to figure out something in theory simple. Okay? Let me explain this. I, I always like this. So uh, as a developer, our, our client, our project managers, they always say, you know what? I want that page or that form just almost the same but with some few changes, so just copy and paste. Why? But developers, we know this is not true. Why? Especially because when you came in a new system, you don't know how anything was built, right? But which looks simple for him, is difficult for us. So again, we need to do reverse engineering. So we see the form, okay? So Drupal is not like a, a HTML web page to find a test, but we need to, you need to select something to search inside our code and try to do the, our best to try to find where is the code, right? And then we could spend an hour or something to do this. But instead of to do that, when we need to say to the client, okay, this is a Drupal website, which, which page are you, you want to clone? So he needs to provide you the URL. So you just need to run, run through the book, try to find a pattern because some routing requires some uh, wikers. Uh, when you, uh, you see like a bar or something, but if you find the, the, you could narrow the search and then you could get the specific routing. And when you have the specific routing for the page your client he wants, all you need to do is pass the parameter for the routing and this command will provide you, okay, the, confirm the URL is correct and then they provide the form and what information is required to render this page. Could be permissions, because any routing has his different information. So now you can go to the form exactly and do what the client thinks you are doing. Copy and paste, maybe change the routing <coughs> or extending. And, and this is the logic we have with this project. It's like a, we need to try provide the tools that developers, we need to be concentrated in the business logic, not in spending hours to doing some research that the users, that the clients usually they don't like to pay. Yeah, so yeah, again, so basically this client is give you the metadata of the route, and as Eduardo mentioned, this is, you know, the class that is registered as of using that route. Yeah, another big, big change on Drupal 8 is events. You know, we have events, is something happening when, you know, I want to execute this piece of code when something happens, like when page has a request or when page has a response, you know? And then we have in a system where we can say, say oh, when this happened, execute this or execute that. So all this data is registered on the system. Again, on the Drupal system, it's kind of hard to get information of it. So we have this event debug command. It will list all of the events that you have registered on the system. Same as you can have with services and with containers, everything has an ID or like a machine name that you can search for as a unique ID. Running this command, it will list all of those events in the system. Mm -hmm. If you want to drill down more information, you just pass that mm -hmm. event type, right? <coughs> and it will show you uh, specific information of the class that is registered as, you know, are responding to that specific event. It also tells you which method it's responding. Let's mm -hmm. say, when a kernel response event happens, mm -hmm. then all these services are, or these classes are executed, and you can even know which method it's containing the code that is really being executed at that specific moment. The good thing with this is like uh, thinking about Drupal 7 structure, this is similar to hooks, but the thing, the problems I always face with hooks is like a, maybe you are trying to implement a hook, but doesn't work and because something in the middle happened before or after, and the output is, is not what you want, and try to determine what is happening before me or after me was really, really bad for me. So in, instead of, you, you, you choose the event you want, and this is the order and the methods that you could determine, okay, this is not working because after me, my implementation, those uh, are executed, okay, now no, I need to change the priority or something, and I will be good. So we'll, we'll, we'll remove this issue we have before with Drupal 7. So another subsystem we have is plugins. Now, as <clears throat> the same way we have modules for extending you know, Drupal functionality, then those can contain plugins and 
pretty much everything is a plugin now. You know, for matter is a plugin, a block is a plugin. You will find a lot of plugins on the system. And discovering the data, it's a little complex. So we provide with this uh, Drupal plugin debug command. And this is kind of the same I mean, pattern that we see. Just run the debug command without any arguments, and we'll see the list of those values. And it's showing me a specific plugin type here and which class is, is responding as that. But plugins are, you know, are a type of plugin, then this plugin can have some implementations. If you want to see more information about the block type plugin, you just pass the, you just pass the block, you know, the type as an argument, you will see something like this. Now it will tell me all these classes are registered as a plugin block, of a type of block of a plugin. And if you want more in a specific information of one implementation, let's say, you want to see what's the detailed information of like user login block that we can have, you can see a listed here, then we have that information. It tells me the exact class that is happening, we know what the ID it is, who's provide, the provider, which module is providing this plugin in the system. And uh, yeah, it's like, you know, which category is this be belongs to in this case is form. So, yeah. so we have a way of discovering all these plugins, metadata through the, through the CLI. So the idea is the same. If you need to modify some blocks on one provider or any other plugin, so instead of to go to the UI, I try to determine just you need the type, the ID, and then you, go, you can go directly to the code to do whatever you need. And we always show the, the, you know, the namespace here of the class. We're not showing the, you know, the, 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 path, the, the file path. But you can guess this from, based on, you know, this is a module, so it belongs to the user module, so it should be something in user, and then, you know, there's a directory called SRC. And then this, it will mimic the directory structure on the file system. So after the module name, what you can find here is in a directory structure within the SRC directory of that specific module. Which, which modules have some which country module has some like also can help you to debug in this? I mean, when we start Drupal Console, there was <laughs> there was n no other way of like you know showing or discovering this data. But now you can find a web profiler module that is great. I mean, you want to talk about this? The web profiler? Yeah, web profiler um, in the same way that Drupal Console was built on top of Symfony profiler. Uh, Luca is, is, is around here, actually, if you want to, to invite the beer. He's an Italian guy from Milan. Actually, Luca? He's not here. No. Oh, okay. But find him. Actually, invite a beer to him. So the idea is, in, for Symfony developers, if you maybe have the option to him, like, okay, you need to choose one of two. You let him or web profiler. Mostly they will choose the web profiler because they don't need a left hand to code because <laughs> this is a really, really important tool for them. And look what Lucas said, we need to do the same. And he built on top of prof a Symfony profiler, a web profiler for Drupal. Uh, oops, don't have any emails. Oh, yeah. No, no, there's no, mm -hmm. he's just mentioning. And what okay. web profilers do is mm -hmm. getting or registering <coughs> data from the whole life cycle of your page, let's say when from the request to the response, it means when someone call a resource or a URL in your page until this resource or this page is like served. So everything that happens from the start time point until the very end point, mm -hmm. it gets registered on the system, and web profiler allow you to, you know, discover that that data. So you can see how long a page takes to load. You can see how many forms we get loaded on the page. Yeah, when, when we finish, we will show the, an image, but it's like an S-ray for your Drupal website. This is all you need. And, <laughs> and we all know in my VR using Kint for you know, debugging tweak or like teaming, right? So instead of, you know, for like outputting the, that array, huge array, you know, the render array. But there's another tool called Bar Dumper which is like really, really great as well. It also, it's a project from the Symfony world that someone bring it to Drupal world and it's really, really cool, cool stuff as well. It also allows you to like, you know, showing data from the render array from the different things happening in your, in your page. And it's great because you can even have this 
data in a specific block, and you, you can just play around with this. It's like a little more advanced version of Kint. I mean, that's what I think about. That's so if you have any questions, you can still ask in GM Olivas uh, or N Solutions or Drupal Console. Um, if you have any question here, you can use the mic to try to record your question. Thank you. <coughs> yeah, I do have a quick question. Yes. Just to get recorders. Okay. Um, so sorry if you asked this at the beginning because I just came in um, sometime after you started. But in terms of caching the output for this, so if we make changes to our code. Um, add a new module or whatever. If we, what do we need to clear in order to rerun that debug and see our changes no, come those, in? Those commands, uh, what Drupal console do, it's like always asking to Drupal and bootstrapping the Drupal for you. So it's pretty much we will have a fresh print of that data on the system. And sometimes when you have a new service or when new module has a service, a few times you need to run like, run, like you know, cache reveal command cache reveal, and then all passing the argument, clean all of the cache. Sometimes you need to do that from the UI, but from the CLI, it's always like doing that for you in advance, so you don't have to run those. And it also make sure when you are when you want to see a, if a module or if a route was registered on the system, the module that contains that definition is installed. Because all the data, all those configurations don't, do not get loaded on the system until the module gets installed. And once the module gets installed, that configuration belongs to the site and not to the module itself. Okay. All right, thanks. This, this is the, how a web profiler looks. And this is an spe a specific inspection about that request. Yeah, as you can see, let me, let me go ahead. Let me go ahead. Just mm -hmm. go ahead. Uh, has all of this functionality that we've seen in Drupal console, has that been available since Drupal 8.0 was originally released, or is this newer? Which functionality? Um, well, uh, this debugging functionality. Um, which, I mean, I'm really impressed with, with all these debug. Oh, no, no, this is before 8.0. <laughs> no, yeah. no, no. You mean if it's part of the. No, no. We only ask Drupal about their, what's its register on the system, and we are oh. showing you through the CLI. So, there's not, so we are not, not like really coding or adding any extra feature of Drupal. All that we show here is part of Drupal. The only thing is so, so hard to find out and discover that mm -hmm. information. Mm. Okay, that's great, thanks. And you, you're adding about Web Profiler, just one second. This is the bar that I show you. So in here it's telling you, you know, we, if this page was loaded properly, giving you 200 code, how long is this page takes to load, how many queries were executed on that page request, and as you can see here, this timeline thing. This is the most awesome thing in the world. You can see how long each event process takes to get executed, how long the page request was, I mean, <coughs> take to execute, how long your controller, I mean, delayed to execute from you started and from the beginning, how long, you know, the rendering part of your view is, 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 is delaying to be complete, completely rendered. Yes? Uh, how do you see the relationship between Drupal Console and Drush? Okay. Uh, between Drupal Console and Drush, like what's the crossover or? Uh, there what? are just two different projects and, I mean, Drupal Console, it's a, again, start as a uh, boilerplate code generator, turns into like full CLI. The more, more people get asking features and sending pull requests for adding features. So Drupal Console is like, you know, code generator, then it also helps you debugging the system, and it also helps you what, you know, Drush has like interact with the system as well, you know, enabling, installing modules, giving you the user URL when you want to log in as a specific user or the user's blog, give you I mean, a way to like put your, like, put your site in maintenance, same, I mean, maintenance mode. There's a lot of things that you can do, but this is like, it's a different project, I mean, it's. It's a different solution. Yeah. Questions? Uh, well, it looks really good. Thanks for all the work you've done on this. Um, my question is somewhat related to Drush again. Um, we've got a project where we've written some custom Drush commands that are specific to that project, so they don't necessarily suit all projects. 
So by writing a few hooks and some functions in Drush, we're able to extend Drush. Is there something in the, because presumably it's the Symfony component that is generating mm -hmm. this? Yes, well, the way... The extensibility, how, how we can we extend the console? Yeah, uh, for, so this, there is not a way to migrate commands, but we have a, generate, a command to generate commands. <laughs> Basically, you, can, you just need to um, provide the same you just need to provide the same arguments and auctions, and the core of the, your function is basically just copy-paste. Okay. Yeah, so basically, you have a way to generate new commands, but if you want to, I mean, add an extra feature of a Drupal console command, that's, mm -hmm. well, most of the functionality of Drupal console commands, it's been moved or migrate to services, and now Drupal console commands are registered as services. So if you want to override a specific functionality of a Drupal console command, you can overwrite or you can decorate or replace the service that is providing that functionality. Okay, so sounds good, thanks. So as you can see, so the, or as you can all see, we are following the approach most into how, this, how Symfony command component works, more like object-oriented things. Again, so that's, that's how you can, well, how you should do. Anything else? Okay, well, thank you for listening to us. Have a good evening.